The new podcast hosted by George Osborne and Ed Ball shows the cosiness of the centrist elite that spans Britain's main parties. And the most recent episode revealed the cosiness of Britain's main parties with the press. Let me tell you, this is no time for a novice. I'm not sure if I've ever talked about this before, but actually that line... Um, I had been at a dinner the night before. So Gordon's conference speech had been written for weeks. There's a whole team in there, final rehearsals. And uh, I wasn't there. I'd gone for dinner with The Sun News. And I was sitting with Rebecca Wade, the editor of The Sun, about 10 people around the table. And she just said, you know, tell me what's going on. And I was talking about the challenge Gordon was facing, the financial crisis, all of these things. And she suddenly said, stop. Stop, she said. That's the line. And I said, what? Because I didn't actually know what I'd said. I was just talking. She said, that's the line. This is no time for a novice. She said, if Gordon Brown says that in his speech tomorrow, I promise you that will be the headline in every newspaper. That's the line. And I thought, well, maybe she's right. And I was slightly embarrassed that I you know, hadn't quite realised I'd said it. So the next morning, 8am, I went into Gordon's hotel suite and they were all there rehearsing. And I said, I've got a line. And I was at dinner last night with The Sun and I think this will work. I said, this is no time for a novice. And Gordon said, that's the line. To quote Michael Hestein, you're telling us no time for a novice was not Brown's, it was Ball. <laughs> well, and of course, Rebecca Brooks, once again, proving that she's been running the country, in fact, for the last 20 years. Well, what can I say? Um, dinner with the sun. I mean, of course, when you're at conference, you do spend a huge amount of time, particularly with the media. They all come down, the editors, the Rupert Murdoch party used to happen on the Tuesday night normally. So... There's always a lot of intrigue, but that's the first, um, the only time where um, I would say a a, a newspaper editor kind of had that kind of um, influence. It was my line. She spotted it. And what I find very, I suppose, obnoxious about that clip is, you know, if you were Ed Balls and you were saying, look, I know it's terrible, but the reality of British politics is that if, if you want to keep getting elected, you have to, you know, court the right wing press. Now, in response, if he had said that in response, you could say, well, if you, if you recognise it's bad, didn't, why didn't you do anything to regulate it when you were in power, when you had the chance to, right? So that could have been a riposte. But I, I think what he said is, is even worse. He's just so relaxed about it. Oh, yeah, of course. The reality of power in Britain is that you, you have to schmooze the editors of, 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 of The Sun and, and Rupert Murdoch's main employees. That's just politics. You know, fab. He doesn't seem to have, have any problem with it whatsoever. The problematic nature of this clip was picked up by a number of people on Twitter, including my colleague Dahlia Gabriel, who said this, I, as an elected official, am getting fed talking points by the sun, one of the most malevolent entities in our media landscape, is not the cute little story you think it is. Aaron Bastani also responded. He said this, I think this podcast is doing a fantastic public service in exposing the uniparty and the absence of any meaningful difference between the two parties encapsulated by these two. A former chancellor mockingly saying the former Sun editor had been running the country for 20 years. Now, the reason I'm reading you those two tweets from, from Dahlia and Aaron is because Ed Balls responded to both of them. They weren't the most thoughtful of replies. And um, so to Dahlia, he said this, I'm not sure Dahlia understood the story. And to Aaron, he said this, Oh, come on, Aaron. Don't be such a wally. Ash, what did you make of that clip? And what did you make of, I suppose, Ed Ball's very dismissive response to anyone who thought it might be somewhat problematic, what he said? I'm going to start with the the um, very condescending tweets of, I don't think Dahlia understood the story. And, oh, come on, Aaron. Don't be such a wally. And I know this is petty. And I know that this is small time. But something that really winds me up on Twitter is when these grandees and, you know, these custodians of sensible debate use your first name in such a way that it just it makes it clear how much they ooze disdain towards you. And when I read things like that, the thought that's going on in my head is don't you fucking dare use my government name ever again, you condescending prick. Um, and I realise that that's totally uh, petty and I realise that it perhaps speaks to me being easily riled, but it's something that's always bothered me. When it comes to the content of the clip, I mean, he is just saying I was a Labour Chancellor of the Exchequer. I was in Gordon Brown's government. and. I was fed a line or I was encouraged to take a line which made it into the Prime Minister's speech 
by the editor of The Sun. And he tells it as a kind of cutesy insider story, as Dahlia points out. But what it actually represents is just how far the influence of the Murdoch media empire extended into what was meant to be a Labour government. Now, this shouldn't be brand new information to anyone who knows their political history. I mean, you think about those meetings between Tony Blair when he was leader of the opposition and Rupert Murdoch. You think about The Sun boasting it was The Sun what won on it after the 97 election victory. Think about the complicity, the active coordination between David Blunkett as Home Secretary, the News of the World, and The Sun when it came to driving an anti-asylum seeker moral panic. And then you think about the way in which the Murdoch empire turned on Gordon Brown. When the 2010 election didn't result in an outright majority for the Conservative Party. They called Gordon Brown a squatter in number 10. Now, I would have thought that that would have prompted a moment of real political reflection for Ed Balls and George Osborne. I think what this demonstrates, this little moment, is that these little centrist dad podcasts, the reason why they're so smug is because they think that they've been restored to power and influence because the left was defeated along with Jeremy Corbyn. So they can say these things, relishing their insider status once again. What they don't realise is that, sure, Jeremy Corbyn was defeated, but that real suspicion of the establishment, a real dissatisfaction with the status quo is still here. So we can look at your chummy little podcast and think that you come across as totally unbearable establishment stooges when you're nip nip nipping within it. Very well put. And of course, if you want to support a media outlet that isn't just a former chancellor and a former shadow chancellor wanging on about how cute it was to have a meal with the editor of The Sun, um, you can go to tomorrowmedia.com slash support. We're currently um, running a fundraiser where we're trying to get 5,000 new supporters so we can put ourselves on a sustainable footing and keep growing. Um, if you are already a regular supporter, thank you so much. You make all of this possible. If not, please do go to tomorrowmedia.com forward slash support. The link is in the description. We really do appreciate it. 